Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It is the latest of our video calls. We are catching up with everybody. We're all kind of stuck at home at the minute. I'm delighted to say that the 303 are on the line. How are you guys? We're good. We're uh, we're kind of quarantined together like Step Brothers. Have you ever seen the movie Step Brothers? We have like bunk beds. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. Who's who's messing with whose drum kit? That's what I want I've to know. Been, I've been doing unspeakable things to his drum you kit. You see these keyboards back here? <laughs> um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't touch those. Oh, God. Don't want to look at that footage. No, 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 no. Uh, well, I'm glad to see you guys are doing all right and everything. You know, we've started these all off in the same way, which is to say, I hope on a serious note, you guys are staying safe, you're staying well and everything. Uh, before we get into the music and all that kind of exciting stuff, just how have you guys kind of been occupying your time over the last year? How have you been feeling this time where you've uh, had to be at home a lot more? It's, uh, you know, we're, I think we're filling it with, you know, productive things, but I just realized uh, for our next, uh, you heard it here first, our next music video, I took it upon myself to learn claymation, uh, which if you, I don't know if anyone's ever messed with it or what you would assume it's, uh, it takes a long, long time, especially when you don't know what you're doing. So uh, I think there's th like, you know, it's, it's important to stay productive for us and creative. And on, even on the outside of that part, we've been, you know, writing music and obviously uh, wrote this song, uh, Loading yeah. Machines, but also a, a lot of others. So we uh, For us, it was, I mean, it's obviously tough, but it was pretty fortuitous in, in that we work so much on outside stuff, music for songwriting and production for other artists. And and in between our own touring, doing shows and stuff, it actually provided us a bit of time to, to come back and circle around and like just make a record and be off the road for a while. And, and so I think that, you know, kind of uh, opportunistically, it was it, in that sense, it's been great. I think when we started working, it was, you know, we were doing what we're doing right now. We were songwriting, even though we live, we were in Boulder, Colorado, we live a couple miles apart. Like we were obviously trying to, trying to be safe and making sure our families are safe and just writing songs over Zoom and stuff. And so I think everyone's had to, you know, whether it's claymation or bacon bread or, or whatever, everyone's kind of had to had to learn how to do new things. And for us, it's provided us an opportunity to, to write a new record. So in, in that sense, we're, we're happy about it. Yeah, very exciting, man. Very exciting to see you guys are being able to do that. You know, where we've had so many of these conversations, it's great to see how people have adapted from home. Very handy. You guys live in the same part of the country. I know a lot of bands really not in that case. It's been very, very tricky for them. Um, but let's talk about that new music, Len. The first kind of obvious question, I guess, is why now? It's been a little minute since you guys were kind of were putting out stuff together as the duo. What prompted this decision to get back in the studio together and write for 303 specifically? I think, honestly, it wasn't it wasn't calculated as much as it just kind of fell into place because we've been, we've been writing music and working together uh, pretty nonstop. Like, I don't think there was really a break in, in us working together and writing, but I think as we started to really see some songs fall into place that made sense for us to release, we also got in touch with Matt Galley who uh, runs Photo Finish Records. And that was the first label that we released uh, our album Want on. And, uh, we ha happened to be unsigned and just kind of freed up. So we reached out and uh, it became this kind of like momentum that just sort of started between, you know, the passion of their their label and uh, our project. And we sort of partnered with them and uh, it just made a lot of sense. Like things just started rolling out and it just feels good. I mean, I feel like, um, I don't know, like when we first started releasing music, there was nothing forced about it. We would just put music up on MySpace uh, if anyone knows what that is anymore. And, uh, we just kind of like roll it out. And I think we've obviously when you're a band and you release something like want or that becomes sort of successful, you kind of have an impetus on you to, and like timelines, which is fine, but it also kind of constrains you to your production and, and uh, productivity. And I think with this, it's like nothing feels forced at all. So it just kind of like, it feels like it rolled out naturally and we're just having fun with it. So it's really, it's really nice in that capacity, but it is in obviously these times we love to play live shows and uh, it's obviously tough to, you know, release something and not be able to go and, and play it in front of our fans and stuff. But, you know, we're optimistic about even if it's a while from now, like we're going to get that showing soon enough. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just keep releasing music in the meantime, you know, yeah, that's exciting. I imagine partnering again with Photo Finish must have been a big part as to why that feels kind of effortless. It must feel like, like you say, right back at the beginning where there were no expectations and it was just, let's see what happens. Let's have fun with it, right? It is. That's exactly, I think that's a key word that you mentioned is fun. For us, I mean, that's that's the central to the mantra of everything that we do, whether it's our, our shows and our 
you know, our, our recorded music, our music videos. I think that that's how it started for us. We were just, you know, at the University of Colorado in college and just wanted to make music that was fun for our friends to party to and, and rock parties. And, and that kind of developed into our, our shows, like the, you know, the ethos of our shows is it's more of a, of a collective kind of gathering and, and it's less of a performance and more of just a party that we just happen to be kind of curating and I'm seeing. And it's very between, it's collaborative between us and, and the crowd. And I think that, that goes with our music and, and especially with this, with the situation with this record label, I think, you know, we're so well aligned with them back in 2008 of just like, just wanting to, to fuck around and like not take things too seriously, but also be very serious about like doing the work and having fun and making music that was energetic and, and welcoming and welcome people from everywhere. And I think that, that being very aligned with someone on the, on the business side of things, as well as, as you know, on the creative and executive side of things is, is great. And, and we feel, you know, we have those relationships still intact and, and they're, and they're super productive. And I think everyone is, is kind of on that same ethos of like why we're doing what we're doing. And especially right now, it seems applicable, at least, I don't know, for, for us just to that sense of like trying to bring a smile to someone's face, whether it's at a show or when they're listening to our music or endow someone with, with, with some kind of joy and, and, um, and kind of sense of that collectivity is, is important right now. And hope, you know, hopefully we're, we're doing a little bit of that. Yeah, no, I think that's more important than ever to get new music out there when you can, and especially when, yeah, you've got a sense of fun and just a bit of distraction in this absolute hellscape of a year we've all had. It makes a lot of sense. It's good to have it, man. Uh, and speaking of which, let's talk about this single. It's kind of just dropped the time recording. It's Lonely Machines. Um, I guess the obvious quest question is 100 Gex. You're working with there. Um, how long have you known those guys and, and how did that collaboration kind of come together? We met them on farmersonly.com. <laughs> excellent, we excellent. 300, 303 gecks. We're like, how many other groups have numbers, just random numbers in their names? But we uh, actually, we we got in, we were working with our friend, Benny Blanco, uh, producer, and um, he mentioned as we were writing, he's just like, hey, do you guys know 100 gecks? Like, do you know of their music and stuff? And we were just like, uh, kind of. I feel like we kind of know it. And he's like, oh, we, I, I worked with them. I think their production is just like next level. They're just like on this insane plane of music and it kind of reminds me of you guys when you started I was like okay yeah and he's like and they also like cite you guys as their inspiration I was like oh okay well <laughs> I was like I gotta hear this then so we checked it out and uh yeah it was just like it's it's totally just messing with like the rules of what people would consider like kind of pop alternative music and like computer uh production and stuff and so we reached out to them and uh, Laura happened to be, she's like, oh, I was just at your show last year for my birthday in Chicago. And we're just like, you were at the show? And she's just like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a big fan. And it, again, it just felt really natural. The only thing that's different for us is that we're not really used to like uh, doing collaboration. We're not by... used to people calling us back when we call them. <laughs> yeah. or usually even like... we just slide in the DMs and no one hits us back. And then but... usually the restraining order comes right after. <laughs> But we, yeah, I think like even for this, uh, you know, we'd want to get in the studio and, and, and sort of like we had the start of this idea of the song sort of uh, we, we already made this sort of skeleton of the song Only Machines. And then we reached out to them and, and asked if they were interested in it and they were super motivated. But it was kind of like a mailbox uh, affair, like we sent it over and then like they kind of went crazy with it, sped it up. I don't even know how many like BPMs like pitched it like it basically came back as like a different animal but it was awesome and then we took that and it was just speaking of like claymation it felt like that it was like you you mess with it send it back we mold it and at the end of the day we met them for the first time at the music video shoot in person so like that's <laughs> I mean these are the times we live in we're trying to be extra safe about everything and yeah. you know the music video we were all super uh, safe, got tested and like, you know, all, but it was great meeting them in person because it was just like the whole video was just like a party for us. It was such a release to like be around people in general and feel safe, but also uh, around them and just like the song that we made together and just like have fun with it. So it's nice to meet people before the song comes out, they collaborate too, because with modern music, I've done stuff where like I did a song for Maroon 5 and hadn't met Adam Levine until like accepting an award on stage for the song. And so I was up there for like 10 seconds. So I go up there, I was like, you take a photo? You're like, oh, and I was like, oh yeah, right around the like, song. He's like, how like, no fans up here. He's like, no, okay. Who's this but, guy crashing my stage? What's going on? 
but that, I mean, that's even before these times. I think everything is so, you know, people are all over the place now, which is one of the things with, with music that's amazing now is you can do it from anywhere. You know, oh I mean, yeah particularly this year that's got been so beneficial absolutely being able to work remotely and do all that kind of stuff but it, it's funny seeing like you know this first piece of new music of the new era with you guys is a collab because you know you had massive success collaborating with all kinds of people in the past and this one does fit so well because they like you say yeah 100 gates have worked in very similar territory to you i do feel like it's it's sort of it, it makes sense that they would cite you as an influence you know what i mean even down to things like that hand crushed by a mallet remix with a fallout boy and craig owens and all that kind of stuff it's so similar to the kind of territory it must have felt like a, a natural fit you know it's interesting though because they're like you know they're a band that's really like cool in their era in the sense that they're like playing coachella and like getting like you know like yeah we never weirdly <laughs> we never got invited to play coachella I mean, listen, still time still time <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah, exactly. We gotta, maybe, maybe we got to break up and reunite in 10 years. And that'll be exactly. Sure. I mean, awesome. honestly, it's, you know, music comes around and cycles around. The cool thing about them is that it doesn't sound like anything. It's not like they're just doing pop punk again and re, like reviving it. It's like they are taking something like PC music and all this stuff and just like doing something really cool and inventive. And I'd like to think that when we started, we sort of didn't know the rules to break. So we just kind of did our own thing as far as production wise and taking in different uh, ins inspirations of music and our sort of like, you know, sense of humor and all these things. So it was like this, you know, storm of different things. I think they they have the same sort of approach. And yeah, it is, it is very uh, refreshing to work with someone like that. Yeah, it's very, very cool. And speaking of your sense of humor, you've just mentioned there, we've got to go in with that reference to probably your most famous lyric of all time, uh, bringing it straight back. You know, the boyfriend's still got beef here and we're throwing it into the lyrics again. Talk to you about why you decided to drop that little reference in there and uh, and when that came into the lyrics. Listen, there's been a lot of science and the dietary, um, you know, influence of diet on long-term health. And Sean's been reading a lot of those. I'm actually studies. paid for by the... Uh... Wait, it's not the anti-national beef council. Yeah, like, I don't know what that would be, beef, but beef, beef too. yeah, it's funny. We like, uh, you know, for us, I think that is like the most memeable sort of like thing that comes back around and it's great. I mean, I honestly haven't had to sing that lyric for Don't Trust Me for a long time because I think we just put the microphone out to the crowd. So it's 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 really fun and I think it's really in in the mindscape but you know at the time i was a vegetarian people keep asking they're like are you veg I'm, I'm a vegetarian now after that song i'm like very cool i am a hypocrite and i eat meat so <laughs> uh but it's it's fun i think like the the callback was fun i think it kind of like it showed i think hopefully the song shows like the evolution of who we are in the in the world of music and all these things but it also sort of has this little bow tied around that's just like okay like you know a little callback and it's like if he still has it your dude, that dude's been eating a lot of beef. <laughs> he's got a lot of beef, so he's got to chill. Yeah, the guy needs to chill. He needs to change his diet up for sure at this point, 10 years on down the line. Yeah, got to change it up. But it's funny you say that like it is it is an evolution of your sound for sure. And it definitely feels like you guys push it. Whereas you always do as songwriters and your other work and stuff as well. But I know it's kind of most recently you did like the tour in 2018 for 10 years of want and all that kind of thing. I always find when I talk to artists when they've done anniversary tours like that, just reflecting on the earliest work they've done or prior successes, it does somehow feed in a little bit into the terms of the stuff you do. Now. How did reflecting on that album affect what you're doing now? So it's interesting that you say that because uh, I think I saw direct, like we, we did that in 2018. We did a, a kind of a tour in honor of want and played the, the record front to back. And it's, as a, as a producer, having produced that stuff, like I would open up some of those sessions from back in the day to, to, to figure out how to play them, the musical direct them, to play them on the, on the tour. And I'd be like, how, why would I ever do that thing? And why would we ever write a song that way? And it's just, you kind of like have such tunnel vision, especially working in songwriting for other artists and stuff. You write so many songs, I think that you look forward all the time. And then it is refreshing to look back sometimes because you, you kind of rediscover how you used to write and how you do things. And I think that, you know, over the past couple of years since then and, and thinking about this new record and thinking about overtly and subconsciously kind of thinking about trying to bridge the gap, as Sean was saying, between our roots and our old things that, you know, were so raw and so kind of kind of in terms of, of just raw energy and, and a feeling and a collectiveness. And then and then also trying to bring our our craft that we've honed a lot, our songwriting craft, our production craft, you know, in terms of working with sonics and production and, and, and songwriting as well and trying to bridge that gap of like where where does that lead you now and I think we've always tried to do that on our records but I think that 
having the time and space on this one. And, and honestly, the circumstances being similar to how we created that first record where we're just working in my basement. Like we're in Los Angeles now, but in, in Colorado, I just have a, an unfinished basement with all my music gear set up. And that's like how we started writing. And then physically, you know, that's how we, we were writing. We even, put, we even had like uh, speakers upstairs, like with his parents yelling at us for being <laughs> yeah, too loud perfect. just to like really mimic the... the You've experience. got to get the atmosphere, haven't you? You've exactly. got to get it. Yeah, the stomp, the stomp. Shut up. Yeah, they showed up in the background. But no, so I think, you know, it's 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 been a great way to tie that kind of stuff for us and and hopefully for the listeners and people who have listened to our music in the past, they'll, they'll be able to draw those parallels and see, you know, the references to, to, to stuff that we've done and then also a progression. Yeah, in terms of that evolution as well, that, that's what I think is so interesting is that it's not just that you've gone off and done this stuff. You've been writing for a myriad of different people, both you guys, uh, across like kind of loads of different genres, ones you sort of worked in before and kind of new ones too. I wonder how that does affect then when you come back to band. Obviously, the more you write and the more experience you have, you're going to get that more experience. But is there anything you can tangibly point out and go, oh, this is totally different from last time. We learned this, uh, you know, eventually, even if it's from a tech standpoint. It's beautiful, I guess, like, you can't really unlearn stuff. And it is beautiful, the sort of naivety that we had, like, coming into the first album, because we literally, I mean, Nat and I didn't know charts. We didn't know, like, top I didn't, I didn't know what a, didn't know what a single was. Like, uh, we were talking with our label, being like, oh, this could be the second single off the record. And I'm like, I thought that that was just a cheaper version of the CD. Because, like, I used to go, because I, I, I DJed and I'd buy vinyl. And like you could buy the full record for 15 bucks or whatever. And then you could buy the single for like seven bucks. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe this is for people who just don't want to buy the full record or whatever. I didn't understand that that was like a promotional push for your record. So I think you're like, I know we're single. That's why we're trying to make this <laughs> music. Trying, to, that's um, why this entire, yeah, this no, entire record is about getting done. I think, I think for us, it's like you kind of, you learn. I mean, it's great to work on your craft and continue to grow, but sometimes you have to like, you have to just like break break the mold of what you think like the structure of like i mean obviously you get so tired like verse pre-chorus chorus verse pre-chorus chorus middle eight whatever just like say it over and over and it's like if it's something doesn't really fit the theme and it's like sometimes we catch ourselves when we're writing we're like we didn't used to care about that we had we, sometimes we would take two different ideas of songs and just like literally throw them over the same <laughs> beat and I think it's tough because obviously we want to evolve as, as musicians and, and as artists and, and, the, and the world has changed as well. So like we want to bring all that into light, but we also want to touch back on the energy that he said, the, the kinetic sort of quality that made our band what it was. And a lot of that, we would play shows live before we even recorded the song sometimes. So we would sometimes like workshop them like a stand up comedian does, you know, like you like are like, oh, this part is way too long sucks. yeah this part sucks let's take this out so you have the i think that's a really interesting way to do things and artists i think hardly do that anymore obviously they write the song they put the weight behind it and they play it but sometimes it is fun to just like get up there and just try it out and uh, different versions of it on different crowds and be like okay so yeah i mean that's that's the short and skinny of it <laughs> no it makes sense especially when you make party music like you guys do i think we could broadly call what you guys do party music right that's a good encompassing term i think yeah, sad yeah. Party, happy party sad party drunk party whatever you <laughs> all do. manner of party it's all covered you can have many different types of party it just comes under that umbrella but yeah trying out live would make sense of course you want to see what's what's hitting them with the right party vibe and uh, and speaking of live tours as well you know at the time of recording we're all still very hopeful about live music um but you should be coming back to the uk next year which is very very exciting talk to me about playing the uk specifically and why that's important oh man it's it's honestly that's one of our favorite places to tour in the world i think for us we first played a show out there i think it was in 2009 and i think one of our first shows there was with the reading and leeds festival and you know i at the time like i was such a fan of just kind of the pop scene and, and the music scene in, in the uk in general because here i think things were pretty separated by genre even in, in the late 2000s like you either like a lot of people either liked you know rap music or they liked country music or they liked electronic music and, and there wasn't a lot of in the pop sphere at least there wasn't a lot of cross-pollination between that we were we were raised completely differently we were raised to like on our parents love of of all the music that we inherited from them and then kind of you know listening on our own to, to hip-hop and to, to electronic music and techno and, and kind of alternative stuff in the 90s and, and then so I think at the time the UK was playing a lot of stuff different stuff like even on on radio one you know it was way more varied in terms of sound genre style of song lyrical content and 
And so being a fan of that guy going to the UK was, was awesome. We, we were a bit apprehensive about it for sure. I remember because like there, I think there was an article that popped up somewhere that was essentially kind of saying that we had sold more singles than Radiohead had sold, I think. And people were like, that's basically wrong. Like that sucks that this band of a, a couple of hacks. I, I like, love that comparison. It's I like, know, why it's like would our you, crown jewel. The first time we ever mentioned in the same sentence yeah. as Radiohead. It's like, and then I, mean, I think, so we were kind of our friends about playing it, but then we got there and it was just yeah. so eye opening. I think in the UK, especially the love of, I mean, we're, we're such fans of UK artists and, and what they're doing. And then also just the, the live music scene in the UK, I think in the UK above anywhere else, I think I can say confidently, like people just love music and they love live music and they're just, uh, they're just an appreciation of that. And, and coming, you know, as an artist, like you can't ask for anything else from that. And people are just so enthused by live music in general. So, so consequently we've, I mean, anytime we get the opportunity to come out there, it's, yeah. we've, we've loved playing there from venue shows to, to Reading and Leeds again, to festivals like Oxygen and Tea in the Park. I think it's, it's been, you know, and we were supposed to come out in earlier in 2000, I guess it was 21 first. So I think that we, um, or I guess it was last summer. And so yeah. it was in it June. Keeps, it keeps rolling back. So we're, I mean, that's one of the things that was, you know, pretty devastating for us in terms of, of the touring but where i think you know when it's safe and when everyone's um secure about about what the the feeling is where that's like the first place that we're going to get back out on the road yeah no we're all hyped for it when it happens man absolutely we're looking forward to returning live music and seeing you guys over here in the uk for the first time in a while as well it'll be really really nice to, to see you guys playing over here it'll be great um well then i'll leave you with this then gents which is to kind of say what's next really i know you don't want to necessarily give too much away but i think we can safely assume this isn't a one and done single right here there's more music to come what can you tell us about that at this stage Listen, uh, yeah, we've been putting in the time and we got songs that uh, we're really happy about. And I think uh, I think we're just going to, I mean, obviously I'm venturing into my career with Claymation a little yeah. bit, but... Uh, <laughs> so as long as you don't become the next Tim Burton guy, then we're... Yeah, we'll see how big that, you know, where that propels me. But I think, you know, I would just say... We have a bunch of new yeah, music. Yeah. We're excited about it. Those keyboards are actually functioning keyboards and not just cardboard cutouts. So we're oh, that's good. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, Prove it. And it's not just ten. Prove it. It's not, <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. Prove it. Uh, so no, we're we're really excited, man. Like we we got a lot of time to to be creative and have fun and and kind of you know really dedicate. Unlike some of the other stuff, you know, some of the other times that we've come around and make through, through music, I think this time we had really a lot of time to, to focus on on what we want to do and how we want to do it. So we're excited with it. And uh, yeah, we'll be releasing new music, a bunch of new music soon. Yeah, it's good to see you guys hyped up for it, man. Excited to hear the rest of it when it comes. And uh, Thank you so much. No, of course, man. And in the meantime, you know, just stay safe out there. And we look forward to seeing you in the UK, like I say, when that is allowed, when that is in the safe. But uh, in the meantime, yeah, take care of yourselves, all right? Come give us a big hello if you're around, man. And thank you for your time. Thanks, everybody. Always, man. All right. 303, everybody.